We have in our midst Dr. Kiran Bedi, IPS, a lady who needs no introduction to the people of India, for many of whom she has been a role model and an inspiration. Good morning to all of you. And thank you for your presence here. And thank you for inviting me all the way from Puducherry. I think it's my first visit to Trichy. And I'm very happy to be here. Heard so much about this city. Many people would drop this name for whatever reason, one or more reason, but it's happy to be here, even though I may not have too much time after this visit, because we have also Pongal celebration at Raj Nivas for all our staff members. I want to congratulate the National College of Trichipoli for this Rajaji Memorial Endowment Lecture. I'm also very personally honored and humbled to be at a place where Bharat Ratnas have walked. Bharat Ratnas have been here in Rajaji. I'm very, very actually blessed today because when you walk and visit the places of Bharat Ratnas, it inspires you to be a little small pearl at least. So this is how I would look at it. And I feel very blessed that I'm at a place where Rajaji was here. Rajaji, in, any way, in many, many ways, contributed to the knowledge of this city, the region, and the country. Recognizing and respecting the presence of Mr. K. Raghunathan, the secretary of the National College of Trichy, Mr. Anubarsu, the director, whom I just mentioned, we also have an IS officer who's recently joined us, whose name is Anabarsu. And I wanted to know whether they were brothers. So it's very good to hear. And very fine officer whom we have today in Puducherry government. I'm sure that's why he's been with you as a director and has stayed on with this institution, I believe, for several years. And he's becoming indispensable for this institution. Our vice president, Mr. Chakrapani, our advocate, who he remembers my advocate agitation. I remember many years ago. And Dr. Sundaraman, the principal of this college. Members of the faculty, eminent guests, visitors, and dear students, boys and girls. I'm truly, I too read, I've been reading, I never knew how deep how illustrious we all knew the kind of contributions these great freedom fighters have made in their lives. But as you know, we grow, we read history, and then we go into other subjects and we get into our own work, and somehow the memory recedes. You made me refresh my memory of Rajaji today, and therefore I'm all the more feeling humbled for having uh, come here in his memory and in his name of his memorial lecture. About him, it has already been said. What I would like to say, reading about his life, was how great these people were. They did not let a moment skip out of their lives, slip out of their lives, not a moment. And how versatile they were. Whereas we are all becoming so focused in just one thing, in just one thing. Here are people who had time for everything. Perhaps they didn't have the f Facebook, and they didn't have these internets, and they didn't have the Twitters, and they didn't have these. I, I think probably that must have been the reason, because the social network is taking away a lot of our time, undoubtedly. Because through one, we open up the world through social network. But they neither had the telephones, nor did they have the television. And all these distractions were they're also creative things. They also contribute. The technology contributes. But they were more into human technology. They were more into creative technology, which was created by hands, the mind, the heart, and the people. I think that is where it was uh, people like him stand out forever. And they will be uh, absolutely remembered and remain an inspiration for the young and the old. To speak to you on this point, since you talked about probity, you wanted me to talk about probity. I have a few thoughts which I collected, which inspired me this morning, which I'm willing to share. We as students, since I'm now focusing more on students and maybe also the faculty, I've seen that now the focus of our youth, colleges, education institutions, 
professional institutions is on development of the professional skill and its employability and the pay packet it will get and the place in which they will be employed and the company which will hire them. The whole focus of our education today is employability. And the skill, the, the, how much skill which we, uh, which we acquire or we sharpen in it in any way. The focus is therefore on professional skills. The focus is losing on personal skills. There are two skills which must go to my mind. If probity in life has to come, then it has to be probity on personal skills, based on personal skills, leading to professional skills. Because if you don't have the personal skills of, and probity is very, very vital foundation of any personal skills. So without focus on personal skills, we are somehow trying to acquire professional skills to go for the highest pay packet. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right or am I wrong? That's the, I think this, when I thought about your college and I thought of coming back to you, what is it that first thought which came to my mind yesterday when I start to think about you was that we are now mad about, we're literally crazy. We are driving ourselves to the hilt to somehow reach an employable stage where we can also pay off our bank loan, our education bank loan, which is also substantial today. So, or we support our families, which the families today demand. The families are demanding early employability. Families are demanding all the com creature comforts as soon as possible to compete with each other in society. So I would think probity cannot come, friends, without graduating and mastering personal skills. But we do master and graduate in professional skills. So, and even in our in UPSC examinations, our personal skills are very little tested. It's the IQ skills which are tested and we, we get our grades. The personal skills get revealed only when you start working at the workplace and how you deal with your people, how you deal with power, how you deal with uncertainties of life. They get tested only then. How do you deal with family pressures which come along or demands which come along? So therefore, that's when probity gets tested. Probity is not getting tested yet in most of these UPSC examinations because you cannot. You cannot provide that challenge enough. You can read a person's mind in the interview, but it's finally in the aggregate. It's a final aggregate which makes the mark sheet. So therefore, my first point for you, friends, is we are remembering Rajaji today. These are people whose foundation was of integrity, simplicity, honesty, total service, remarkable courage, remarkable courage, who would have the, who would have the courage to challenge Nehru and come up with, walk away from the Congress and set up his own political party of the Swaraj party. The, the point is, they had the courage to take on, even support the British during Quit India movement when it was going the other way. They had right or wrong, they had the courage of conviction. These are personal skills where we have no classes on. There is nothing called passing of graduation in mandatory classes of ethics or morality or probity classes. We don't have. It's not your fault. It's because that is, that we think is not a professional degree required. Whereas it's a foundation of your entire life. Because how are you going to deal with work? Your response will depend on your growth as a student. How? Did you have personal discipline in your life? Did you have a spirit of sacrifice? Did you have integrity? Did you have a habit of good character? All these habits actually get reflected when you work at the workplace. So remember, my first point for you is that pers without development and personal skills also not get taught, they get learned. And they learned, get learned from families. They get learned from parents. They get learned from teachers. The teachers play as role models. Parents are the ones who every day are sending the right. It's the environment at home. We all go to the temple individually. And I've noticed whether it's north or south, India is not different. Everybody goes to a workplace, whether they believe on God or not. 
birth or death is linked with rituals which you invoke divinity. Our every birth, every death, every marriage, every ceremony is linked with invocation of the divinity. So, it, but it is so personal. This worship to God is so personal and individual and selfish. It is not for the larger good. We don't pray for larger good, we pray for ourselves. It's highly transactional. Even our relationship with the Almighty is that I gave you so much, what is in it for me, God? You did not give me, I gave so much in Tirupati, I gave so much of gold in Tirupati, I gave so much of wealth in Tirupati, Lord Tirupati, what did you give me? So we start equating, we start testing the God. What did he give me when I gave so much? So the whole thing is, transactional. The whole life, friends, is becoming business. It's bu becoming business and not service. It's not a cause. It's not a purpose. Probity sometimes comes into business and sometimes may not. Well, you've seen some of the richest businessmen are every day being raided today. They are also fl fleeing away from the country to escape the gallows or the escape the long arm of, of the police or the law and order. So friends, personal and professional skills are very vital. And those of you who focus only on professional, uh, uh, professional skills and think personal skills can be taken for granted will pay a price. You will pay a price somehow or the other, sometimes in your personal life, sometimes in your professional life, it will pay because habits don't go away. Habits of speech, habits of heart, habits of mind, habits of eating, living, um, spending, talking. All these are matters of probity, which means personal discipline in life. So please remember that even if you're not taught, it is not necessarily a classroom can be a discussion. Classroom can be learning from each other, but real personal skills are taught in your own space when you read when you read, when you reflect, when you meditate, when you self-audit, and you choose to be honest. You choose to be honest. Look, today's news, morning news, is a very major audit company, PricewaterCooper, is being delist, has been directed by SEBI not to do any audit work in the country for the next two years. One of the largest auditing company in the, in the country today, and multinational, who did commit huge amount of cheating, as, as, as Sebi declares, in the Satyam case, where the entire company of thousands, and South was most heavily affected at that time when Satyam collapsed. So friends, here was a man who was a hero of his time. Do you remember that man? He was a hero of his time when Satyam was a great success story. And look what happened to him. Look what happened to him. How many years he spent in jail, and the company which audited him, do you mean to say they were lack of professional skills? No, they had the highest of professional skills, but they abused their professional skills. Why? Because they had no personal skills. The personal skills were never learned. They were, they were all le left to the winds to say only what happens is greed and need and somehow um, making a place for themselves by hook or crook. So that's my first. I wanted to explain to you because I don't see this happening even in schools today. Schools, even children, it's more on A grades, 100 marks, 100 out of 100. But at what cost? At what cost? They are rude to their parents. They are rude to their, uh, their friends. They somehow cut corners to make the, make the grades. It will not. It might give you a great job very fast, but it will also have a mighty fall. And we will suffer in health, we will suffer in social relationships, and the country will suffer. Because when we cheat in relationships, the country suffers. Because what happens? You spread sadness in the society. You spread unhappiness in society. You spread deprivation and stress in society. You spread ill health in society. And it takes the happiness quotient below. It reduces the happiness quotient of a society. So this is my point number one. Number two, friends, when you're a good public servant or in the private sector, or you're a professional, it is not that work which tires us. It is not that work which I've noticed tires us. I've seen many good officers. 
it is the expectation of reward which tires us. When you only wait for, I have done this, now where is my promotion? Where is my increment? Where is my new posting? And then you get tired because you've been waiting for your rewards. Because you did not learn to only serve and serve because that's your duty to serve. So my second point, which I thought I will drop as an idea for you is, remember if when you are getting tired, it is not the work which is tiring you. Remember, it's not the work. It's your expectation of reward from that work, which is crossing certain limits. Of course, you have a right to certain responses of that work. But waiting only to say, make the work conditional, and to then feel happy, you are not exercising that probity at work. Probity does not demand reward. Probity demands only service for the sake of service. My second point is this, which I wanted to share as a thought. My third point, which I want to share with you is, what will make you a good person at work? What will make you a person of probity? Sometimes we say, and I'm also asked this question all the time, what will happen after you go away as Lieutenant Governor Puducherry? Who will bike again as a governor? Because we bike as governor, as all of us. We go cycling in the morning for such, such Puducherry. We go cycling to dirty ponds. We go to cycling to dirty drains. We greet people. We connect the Raj Nivas with the people. We don't call it Raj Nivas. We call it People Nivas. And so that we people connect with the governor, with the people. We connect them. So Saturdays and Sundays, and many people ask me, and we do many other interesting things at Rajnivas. If you want to know more, you can go to our Rajnivas website and see the good practices Rajnivas Pondicherry has adopted. Interestingly, the governor's conference is now passed a resolution exactly to do more the things which Rajnivas and Pondicherry has been doing for more than a year and a half. All the good practices of opening it up to people's hearing, where children can also come at a free time of an open house between four to seven, three hours we stand every day meeting people one by one. Because if you sit down, then everybody sits down and expects a cup of tea. We, when we keep standing and we keep working, nobody expects a cup of tea. They talk and they go. They're sharp to the point and they go. So that's what we do. The point is, what makes a good person? Now, the question here is, many times when I'm asked, will this practice remain? After you go, I say, well, whether it remains or not, I do not know. But what we are doing every day, one thing at a time, is making a difference to that person. That's it. Now, whether that becomes an institution or not, I do not know. Whether I can clean up the whole Pondicherry and whole of India, I do not know. It's like the prime minister of our country. What is he doing today? What do I see what he's doing? He's every day taking a new challenge. Every day he's introducing a new policy which might, might uh, make it more challenging for him. It might bring even criticism for him. But he's continuing to dare, he's continuing to drive the change. Whether he succeeds or not is not the question. It's a question is, he thinks, he thinks. You and I may not think, somebody may not think, we may, we may not. He drives it to the change. Why? What makes a person daring? What makes a good person is, he thinks or she thinks or we think or the doer thinks, whatever I'm doing is making the difference here. It's like when we go biking or we go to a park, which people have said that, uh, uh, like the recently we did an interesting case where a, a complaint came to us in the open house at Rajnivas, as I told you, we stand for three hours listening to people to complain. They can come walk in turn by turn. First come, first serve. They enter a coupon, they come in, and they are heard, their work is attended. And from there, we pick up, which is that one thing we should go and visit on the weekend? Here was one complaint which came, where a lady came, and she said, I have been out of my own house for the last 11 years. Last 11 years, a particular bad character who is very, very um, interlinked, has very powerful connections, has kept me out of my own house. And there were others also. In a police officer from Tamil Nadu, he also came. And they said, we've been out of this house for the last 11 years. We want a house back. 
I said, why? What has happened? He said, because a particular bad character who's very well connected politically and administratively or has the money power has shut the doors. He had large doors shut. So people were shut out, doors were closed. So the noble people could not enter. He sold the house to these people and got it back by muscle power saying, no, no, price has gone up. I don't want to give it to you. So he neither gave them the money nor the house possession. So they came to me knowing that the Rajnivas is open to listening. They came after 11 years. And when they said to me that this is what happened, I said, this is not. And the police officer in me it was suddenly, hey, this has been a violation. This is unjust. So with the governor, I had the power. And with the police officer, I had that sense of uh, uh, instant justice. Many times I'm asked, why did you join the Indian police service? And I said, it has the power of instant justice. I used to say that. And for me, this was instant justice. So I said, I'll come. So I told the lady, I'm coming to your place to see it the next day. Friends, we went. And there were two big gates. And because I was coming, the municipal commissioner had thrown open the gates. He opened up the gates. They were all gates were open now. Why did they not do it earlier? Why did they not do it earlier? The gates were now open. And those people came. And when I saw it all, the complaint was true. They had been denied to their own house for 11 long years. So when we read the court orders, the court orders had nowhere sealed their property. They had only sealed the property of the criminal who he had was inside the jail for a murder case now. Thank God he was not there. He was in a murder case inside the jail. So we had that story. And we told the lady, you occupy this house. Here we are. You walk into this house, this is your house, nothing stops you. We removed the gates. That area has no more any gates. People can come in and go. The gates were removed that morning itself. And police was appointed there to look after till these people are rehabilitated and the area is cleaned up. Question is, then somebody might ask me, how many more will happen in future? I, that's not my concern. I have made the difference to that person. That person has gone back home. That person. Now, whether the successor does it or not, is not, can I, can, I have no guarantee. Even I have no guarantee. But the goodness is you do what is needed to be done at that time of your responsibility and don't worry, wait for rewards. Just do it because that's your responsibility. So, friends, this is my second thing is what is it when you are at work that will make you? Good people, good person, is when you don't worry about how large the effect would be, how little it would be, it makes the difference at that time, which means living in the present. My third point is, is work exactly as Rajaji would have said, and that's the way they worked, and that's the way they delivered, is they worked as if they were owners of that property. They were owners of that work. They were owners of the budget. They were owners of that office. They owned it. It's theirs. It's like spending the money just as if you wouldn't be very careful in counting your money and spending it. But when it's somebody else's money or it's government money, we don't mind it too. Let it go. Freebies. Mixie here, a grinder there, a mangal sutra here, or a sari here, or a sugar there. No budget. No budget. Without budgeting, we keep giving. Whose money is it? Whose money is it? Is it going out of your pocket? You give. You are very good. If you are rich, you got a lot of money, spend it out of your pocket. But when you're spending public money, then you have to do it as a legislated, budgeted money for which money has to be generated. Money has to be earned. Money has to be saved and then given to people who truly need it. There are people who need it. There are people who don't need it. I'm being told there are many t houses in Tamil Nadu who have more than three televisions. They have three, three grinders, three, three mixers. Do they need it? They have three, three mangal sutras. <laughs> you don't need three mangal sutras. You only need one, isn't it? Or you wear three. You wear only one. You don't wear one over the other. So question is, when we give the probity in government life, which Rajaji also would have endorsed, is trusteeship. You spend the money of the government or your office, 
where you are in charge, either, either as a civil servant or as a company executive or as a head of an institution, you spend it as if it's your own money. Own money. If when you spend it as your own money, you're very careful. You save money. You don't spend. You save. And you only buy that with the lowest price. You don't go for the highest price. You don't go for the highest tender. You go for the lowest tender, isn't it? And you buy the right quality. In government, everything else is, everything is the opposite direction. We cannot, this is why probity is gone. And who's at fault? Who is at fault? The fault is you, you the youngsters. You are the ones who are joining these civil services. You are the ones who are clearing these files, friends. It's youngsters who are clearing the files. Youngsters, after 60, we retire. So who is there in these civil services? Who is in the government? Who is in the corporate which is, which is abusing their people? Who? It's youngsters coming off from such illustrious colleges. Why? Because you never passed a probity class. You never had a degree alongside in probity. You never have a, had a training in sense of self-responsibility. And you never self-trained. So friends, my fourth point is that probity will not come till you own responsibility. And you look at it as a trustee. It's like father. I, when we go to many government schools in Pondicherry, friends, you'll be surprised to know. Pondicherry provides free school, like many others, like Tamil Nadu also does, provide free schooling to the children. And the government schools, the schooling is free. Books are given, uniform is given, midday meal is given, transport is free, everything's free. What are their fathers doing? What are the fathers of many of these boys and girls doing? We did a survey. We did a survey that, and we did a survey saying, tell us what does your father do? What does your mother do? Most of the parents, one parent was a daily laborer, a laborer, a casual laborer. And half of the boys, it was a boys' school, half of the boys' friends, you'll be surprised to know, had said, my father is, is alcoholic. My father spends his money in alcohol. Now, it's our taxpayers' money which is going into very important, valuable education. What is the father doing? It's called trusteeship. He is not taking responsibility for the children he's produced. He is in some, some alcohol pub shop, and there's some theka wo kya kachi sharab hoti hai? That which we're getting closed now. Huh? Huh? Arak shops. My God. Arak shops. In morning for breakfast. Arak for breakfast. And arak for breakfast into your stomach completely finishes your stomach lining. And when your stomach lining is gone, your liver cannot filter, you go for the hospital treatment. And now you are looking for liver replacement. And now you are fighting to the government and you are agitating and some political party picks it up to say, pay for his liver replacement. Or they cause accident, these alcoholics cause accidents, Others lose their life, but because he got injured, some another leader comes and asks for compensation for him. Because the police has not recorded that the heavy vehicle accident was caused by a drunken man. Because if they say that, then the drunken man will be arrested and not the truck driver. Sometimes the truck driver to be booked for public consumption, they do not say that this man was drunk. So friends, what I'm saying is ownership. It's exceedingly, so you have a sense of ownership even as a citizen, as a father, as a brother, as a teacher, as a mother, as a mother, father, mother, all these relationships is ownership of your responsibility as students. The biggest responsibility you as students have today is see that you utilize the college facilities to the maximum. And be grateful to the college for what it is giving you. And grateful for, to the country for what it is giving you. Grateful to your society for what it is giving you. Grateful to your parents for what it is giving you. Grateful to the bank which may have given you some support. Grateful to your teachers for what they're teaching you. It's gratitude. 
gratitude, without gratitude, sense of responsibility never comes. I think that sense of responsibility, once it comes, we will be remembering Rajaji in the real spirit. My last point, friends, is I want to leave a mantra for Ds. The first D is when you make a decision that is the right decision in your ex in exercise of your integrity, then decide it. Once you decide it, that's the first D. Decide the right thing. You people don't decide. We are afraid to decide. Decide that this is the right thing to do. Do it. That's first thing is decide. We are so indecisive. We seek help in even taking a right decision. We sometimes don't, we certainly don't consult in taking wrong decisions. But we are all the time dithering in taking the right decision. So number one is decide once you take a, if you are in confusion, which two are the right decision, you can't consult your elders, your friends, people you, who are trustworthy, but decide. Number one is decide. Then do it. Then do it. The, this is a probity test given to many children in the schools these days, called the probity test. First is training to decide. Second is training to do it. Because then you don't do it. You want to take a decision, but you're afraid to do it. Now do it. Express your honesty in doing it. Third is defend it. Go and defend it. You, if when you start defending it, you have to argue for it. You have to be convinced that it was the right decision. And the fourth is deliver it. Then go deliver it. So four Ds is decide it. Do it. Defend it. And deliver it. Once you do these four things, you will see you have and you have to defend it, defend the right decision. Automatically, when you argue it out, you will realize that you're not able to defend it. Then it wasn't right. So go and defend it. Argue for it, the pros and cons for your, before your elders. Your, this is an exercise. This is the kind of exercise we all need to learn on the shop floors. Classroom is a shop floor. Home is a shop floor. Our community gatherings are shop floors. Our temples, masjids, churches, and gurdwaras, or places of worship, or samagams, or satsang are shop floors. Our shop floors were probity, where the leaders and missionaries, whoever is leading the prayer, must pass on probity messages all the time. Not only saying, worship God. It should say, worship God through probity, through practice of probity. You want to worship God? Worship God through mankind through honesty and practice of honest, personal discipline through mankind, which is his creation, which is Lord's creation. We are, we are a creation. We are Lord's creation. When it is Lord's creation, then Lord is not visible directly. The Lord is visible through our actions, through our service to humanity. To me, this is true spirituality in practice. Once we do that, I think the message of probity will be, will be lived. It's finally in the end I would co to give you this quotation that integrity without knowledge is weak. Integrity which is without knowledge is weak and of little use. What we are doing in many institutions is knowledge. But integrity without knowledge is weak. But with knowledge which we are getting, which we are getting without knowledge without integrity is dangerous and dreadful and deceitful and dishonest. So integrity without knowledge is weak because he has no knowledge. He doesn't know he's an honest man. He's an honest poor man, but he has no skill. He has no knowledge. He's weak. But people like us who are going to the highest of the institutions, we got the knowledge, but we don't have integrity. Then this knowledge is dangerous. It's dreadful. It's deceitful. Exactly what I told you about the Satyam's case. What happened? They had knowledge without integrity. And see how dangerous it began. It ruined hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lives. It ruined crores and crores of rupees. It was dangerous and dreadful. But they had the knowledge. But they abused their knowledge. So probity in life needs personal responsibility. It needs personal skills. It needs personal to professional and not professional to person. So therefore, Work on basic, the, creating a basic foundation of your life. When we remember Bharat Rasnas like Rajaji, they had a very, very strong foundation. 
they built and they continue to build on their foundation and every day to read, to think, to reflect, to acquire and remain principled and be courageous. I thank you very much for giving me this very rare opportunity of coming and remembering Rajaji. Thank you so much.